Hi. Now what I have here is a set of observations X and we've got five sevens here. And if you had to work out the mean of this set of numbers, it's pretty obvious. It's going to be seven. But you could work out the mean just by adding them all up and you'll get 35. And if you divide it by five, you get back seven. So what we've got is that the mean X bar equals seven. And what we can do is illustrate this on a simple line. We can write our five observations on here. They're all sevens. OK, nothing spectacular in that. Let's take another set of points. OK, our observations are 7, 6, 7, 7, 8, as you can see. And if you work out the mean of these values, just add them up and divide by 5, again, you'll find that that comes to a mean value x bar of 7. And if we were to draw the line for this, where this was the 7, and we've got our observations now drawn on, we've got the 7 here, and this one is the 6. Now the 6 is 1 unit below the 7. We'll just put that as minus 1 to indicate 1 unit below. Then we've got 7, 7, and the last observation was 8, which was plus 1 unit above the mean. So it's no surprise really that the mean is 7 because you can see that we've got an equal amount of deviations as we call them below the mean as we have above. Now let's take a third set. Now in this third set, again if you were to add these up and divide by 5, you'd get x bar, the mean being 7. And I've drawn this out already for you. And you'll notice that the first observation, which was 5, two deviations below the mean. This one, the 8, one above. The 9, two deviations above. And finally, the 6 was one deviation below the mean. If you're on the mean, the 7, there's no deviation from the mean. And again, you can see that if you add up the 1 and the 2 here, it cancels out with the minus 2 and the minus 1. Now, the reason why I've drawn these diagrams is to show you the scattering of the observations about the mean. In the first one, we've got no scattering. This one, we've got slightly more scattering than what we had here. And with this one, much more scattering than what we had here. And what we like to do in statistics is work out some kind of measure of this scattering about the mean. And it's called the standard deviation. The symbol for standard deviation is this. It's pronounced sigma. Although at times you will see different versions of this, but generally it's that letter sigma. So how do we work out the standard deviation, a measurement of this scattering? Well, it would seem as if we ought to add up all the deviations from the mean, that would be working out an observation minus the mean, x bar, and try and work out the mean of these. We would add them all up and divide by however many we got, which we'll say is n. So in a case like in this diagram, we would have no deviation from the mean, so that'd be zero, plus minus 1, plus 0, plus 0, plus 1. That would be the, the result of the top here, the sum of the deviations. But that comes to 0. And 0 divided by anything, the number of observations, would still be 0. Oh dear. Doesn't sound like a good idea. The same would be true for this one. If you added up all the deviations here, it would come to 0. It will always come to 0. So how are we going to get around this problem? Now if we were to square the deviations and then total them, then we wouldn't get 0. And then we could work out the mean of the sum of the squares of those deviations by dividing by n. But because we've squared this, we often like to kind of reverse the effect. 
and that would be to take the square root. And this is what we use for working out standard deviation. Now, if we were to do this calculation for the first set of values, you'll see that if we took the mean, 7, and we worked out 7 take away 7, we're going to get no deviation for the first one. In fact, they'll all be 0. So as I said earlier, this will come to 0. Square 0, you get 0. Divided by 5 values, still 0. Square root 0, it's still going to be 0. So for this particular set of values, sigma turns out to be 0. Let's try it for this set. What's sigma going to be here? Well, we need to do the sum of the squares of the deviations. So the first value deviates from the mean by 0 units. So we'll just put that as 0 squared. Then we have to add the deviation of the 6, which was minus 1, and we square it. The 7 next, well, that deviates from the mean by 0 units. The next 7 deviates by 0 units, and the 8 deviates by one unit from the mean, so we'll do plus one squared. And we need to divide that by the number of observations, which is five, and square root this result. So if we square root it, what do we get? Well, I'll leave it for you to check, but if you do it on your calculator, you'll get 0 0.632 and so on. So it's an indication of more scattering about the mean than this one. And what about this one? Well, I would hopefully expect a bigger number than this. So let's just try it. For sigma here, we're going to have to square the deviations and add them together. So for 5, that is minus 2 squared, plus for the 8, that's going to be 1 squared, the 9 is two deviations above the mean, so we square that. The 7 is on the mean, so there's no deviation there. And the 6 is one unit below the mean, so we square the minus 1. And divide by the number of observations, which is 5, and take the square root. So if we take the square root of that, and you work it out on your calculator, you'll get the square root of 2, which actually comes to 1.414 and so on. So clearly a bigger measure of scattering than the value we had here. So this is a handy measure to work with. You don't want to have to draw these diagrams all the time to get a feel for the scattering, but hopefully it just gives you an idea of what's going on. Now using this formula is a bit time consuming. We've always got to work out what the deviations from the mean are. Now it can be shown that there is another formula which is equivalent to this. I'm just going to give it to you without proof here. It's the sum of the squares of the observations divided by the number of observations and then we subtract the mean squared and finally work out the square root of all this value. So we don't have to do the deviation from the mean in each case. So it's very handy if you could try and learn these particular formulae. But as I say, you'll find that this one is the one that is quicker to use. And I'll just show you now how it works, say, in number two. If we look at number two again and use this new version of the form, the standard deviation sigma, okay, is going to be the sum of the squares of the observations. So we've got 7 squared plus the next one, 6 squared plus, and then we would do 7 squared plus another 7 squared plus 8 squared. So that's that part, and then divide that by n, n being 5 observations, and then minus the mean squared. And we know that the mean is 7, so we've got 7 squared on the end there. And we've got to square root this result. So if you try that on your calculator now, you should find you get the same result as we had before. 
0 0.632 and so on. Okay? What I would encourage you to do is have a go at number 3 with this new formula. Check out that you can get this particular result. Now, this is all very well and good using this particular formula for small data sets like this. But if you have a large data set where a lot of values are repeated, then what we need to do is adapt this formula and work off a frequency table. So what I'd like to show you in the next tutorial is how we deal with working with frequency tables to work out the standard deviation.